I hope you're starting to see things now. See how these shapes are, right? There's one there, but I can choose there, but uh, I chose to put her right there. I took a lower angle because I wanted to accentuate her beautiful legs and her height, give her kind of more of a hero feel. So I took a low angle so I could put her right in the middle of that shape. And so you want to place them in the middle and not on the edge, OK? And so I, I walked around, and I took a different perspective. And that's what I do a lot. I'll, I'll look one way, but I'll walk in, in the entire area where I'm shooting just so I can get an idea of what kind of shapes there are. And so let's say, well, I like that shot, but I actually like this composition better because now I show more depth. And now the other shot, you didn't know that there was a beautiful lake there. But now you can see the lake. And so again, I'm doing that same type of philosophy, right? Putting them in, a, finding a little backdrop and then showing some depth behind it, OK? So find your backdrop or your Scott spot, and then find the depth behind it of where you are. And that, that um, kind of technique will not steer you wrong. It will always lead you to a good shot. And I love to show depth in my epic landscape shots. So when you're doing an epic landscape shot, I love to show just how vast that area is and depth is very important, okay? And so this is a little bit different, right? It's more of a backdrop shot, but again, you see some depth to the left of the image is the beautiful sky. I could have just shot her all on that red. It would look pr pretty cool, but that could be anywhere. That could be inside, right? But because I'm showing that sky there, it gives you a sense of where I am, okay? Now let's go to uh, Spain. And I saw this beautiful structure there. Actually, that entire structure was just white. But uh, when I took the image back home and I looked at it, I go, you know what? If I post-process this, and because she's wearing a red dress, and I use some complementary colors with it, I think this could be a very interesting contemporary portrait. So here, not only do I do the composition, but my post-processing was huge. If you just saw, saw this picture with, in white, I guess it would look OK. But I just think it has much more impact by using the different colors, too. OK, here's another shot. And she's jumping. And so I want to accentuate what? Height. So. I'm taking a lower angle. And so not only when I take a lower angle, I'm also kind of seeing the texture of those rocks on the seashore. And I love how that light just highlights, gives a highlight to all those rocks. And then you can see the depth involved with that. And then she's jumping. And I'm able to put her legs and her head into areas that you clearly see. Right? So her legs are in a shape, and then her head is in a shape above her, and everything looks organized there. And so understanding these shapes in your composition also helps you with learning how to crop. right? And so you, with that understanding of, I want this person to look at every single pixel of this picture. Right? And if you see it that way, you go, well, maybe this extraneous stuff over here really doesn't add anything to the picture. And if I crop it, then I could make it so they're looking at the entire photo. And that's really how I decide on cropping, too. So I didn't really get into cropping, but cropping and the composition go together. So you had to learn uh, how to crop it, and, but also you learn how to compose it. OK, here's another picture in Spain. What am I? I'm doing the same darn technique again. I'm finding a backdrop, and I'm looking for some depth. I'm looking what gives the character of where I'm at. And I just happened to catch this jogger coming, and I liked he was wearing yellow. And I think the yellow and the orange and the, and the blue sky, it all works together. So I actually like that shot. But it gives you reason to take your eye and look across the entire frame with that little jogger there in yellow. Let's get to the next slide here. And you see where I put her head? Right at the top of that. See, so you see those uh, vanishing lines, right? 
And so I took a slightly lower angle so I can position her head right in the middle of that. Here's another photo where I saw some trees and I saw some, an empty shape there. So I positioned her so her head was right in the middle so you can't miss it. That is the first thing that you're going to see. Right? So those, my elements, the trees, will just frame that subject. So that's what you're looking for is framing of elements. And also your use of light and, and your posing will all add to that. But bam, you can see that. Another technique that I like using is I like using corners. right? And so you can see I shot that at the corner of the dock there because that gives you some natural leading lines is when you can use corners. All right, let's go to Paris again. And so I rented this beautiful place out. Uh, and so on the idea that we could shoot there too and have a great view of the Eiffel Tower. Um, and so I put her, as you can see, I put her right in. It's the same technique. Where's your little Scott spot? And where's the depth, right? Find the backdrop and then depth. And it creates a clean shot. Now, this is a little bit more complicated. I had a few things that I had to worry about here. One, if you've ever been here in Paris on this bridge, it's one of Paris's most famous bridges. There's hundreds and thousands of people walking on this bridge all the time, which is in the front of those lanterns there. Uh, so I said, well, it's so busy over there. Let's go around the corner where nobody's going to really walk in front of me so I have a better chance of taking a clean shot. And so really, the only place that you can put your subject is right there below that toes, because you got a little area right there where you can put her head. And this photo would make sense. If you didn't put her head there, then it would be cluttered by all that stuff in the background, and it wouldn't be as clean. Here's a little bit more obvious shot uh, in uh, New York Times uh, Central Park, where those arches create a great shape. She's wearing white. Bam, pops off. There it is. Here I'm, I'm creating the sky. I'm taking a little bit lower angle again. And, what I, and another thing is, is that you want to try to create your shapes at different heights. And the reason why you want them at different heights is that it creates a diagonal as you're looking across the frame. And diagonal lines make you look at the entire picture. Right? So if you have different heights, then it forces your eye to look across things. OK? And so that's why I had that Eiffel Tower a little bit higher than my subjects, so you will look across that frame. When you put two, two elements at the same height, then your eye tends to stay at that level, and you won't look across the entire frame. Here's another great shot. Um, you have to do your homework when you go to, like, especially if you're going to shoot at iconic locations, you can't shoot in the normal places. Because where the normal places is, is what? There's thousands of people, right? So I'm going to walk, you know, a quarter of a mile down um, and get a shot where there's less people. I mean, there's the uh, smell of urine there, but that's okay. <laughs> You want the shot. Uh, and so, but I love how everything comes together. Again, I'm finding a backdrop. Uh, it is the side of a wall. I'm placing my subject there, but I have something of significance in the foreground and in the background. And I'm putting Notre Dame, you guys know where Notre Dame is, right? That's where the hunchback of Notre Dame lives, ringing the bells. And I put that in a shape also. You can see how I'm using those leading lines. So everything is being set up here. Notre Dame is being set up by a shape, and also my subject is being set up by a shape too. Foreground, background, taking a lower angle. I had to take a lower angle here to make everything work, and it looks perfect. Often, you can also use texture. I was shooting this wedding, and I just saw this sea of yellow. That's great. That's kind of like a backdrop to me, right? And I'm going to have a foreground and the background, right? So I'm going to have a little bit of yellow in the front, yellow in the back, and then boom, put them in that sea of yellow. And that also kind of, they pop out from that shape there. Here's a more uh, traditional situation where I am now, 
Now, there you can see texture, like um, if it's small texture in the background, that's okay, especially if you're blurring it out too. Where I'm here, I'm using my 85 millimeter lens, and so now if I'm shooting at 1.8, that background gets a little bit blurrier, and so that kind of makes it more of a shape when you see less texture there. But regardless, it's still a shape, It'd be worse if I put them the cactus right behind them. That would be very distracting. But those trees behind them are actually as a nice shape. And then I'm using the cactus as leading elements to point to my subject. I wanted a lower angle because I love the color of those flowers. And so that just, when you walked into this area, you just felt like, wow. I love the color of those flowers. I love the cactus. How can I incorporate everything to make it look logical? So I put them in between one of the cactus, took a lower angle so their heads would right be in those trees, and put some nice rim lighting behind them to separate them. So all those things had to come together. Here is uh, a tree I'm using, fairly obvious. There's texture there, but it's definitely a shape. Here I'm using the sky. Um, and taking a lower angle, so her head's in the middle of that sky. Here we are going to go to um, Hawaii, and there is this, I'm not in the water, okay? <laughs> I just, there's this pier that goes out there. In fact, next week I'm going to go shoot here if you want to come with me. Uh, we'll be there. And um, I can take a lower angle um, because this pier goes all the way in out, and then I had her surf out to this little area, but isn't that like the, per there's a huge spot right there, right? She just pops right out, something in the foreground, something in the background. But there's a huge spot, and you see her immediately. Um, downtown Los Angeles is a very famous place to shoot. Um, and again, this same technique. I love these curves, right? I thought those curves were really interesting, but where am I going to place the subject? There's a background there, right? And I put the subjects right in the background, and I have some depth so I can show the streets of Los Angeles and the lights and things like that. And so everything works together there. Now let's go to Portland, up here. Um, and you can see the texture, the shape that I put them in with the rocks. I, of course, had to raise my camera higher to put their heads in the middle of that. But again, it's the same technique. I mean, where's your backdrop? Something of significance in the background, which was that beautiful waterfall. So you have two elements there. You can also use the ground as a shape, too. And so I'm using the ground as negative space to set up my, my, uh, my subjects there. And then I put them right in that tree. And so you can see all those elements in the tree kind of framing them. Uh, but that ground and the chairs create an awesome leading line so you look directly right at the subjects. I'm using light here. So I'm finding a bright spot, creating a silhouette. And then that is creating a shape and doing the little bouquet balls in front of my lens to create an interesting picture. Here again, I'm going to Central Park here, and I'm finding, OK, I want to get the feel of Central Park. I love those columns. Ooh, I love those trees in the background, how it's lit there. She's wearing red. Red and green are complementary colors. It's going to pop off right there, put her in that small little square every there, every, right there. And now I get the flavor of you know, where I'm at, plus a nice spot to put the model here. Uh, it's a very famous face place, Trocadero Plaza, to take photos. And I'm using, now when you're shooting an iconic element, here's the key. You don't have to shoot the entire thing. It's so famous, even if you just show a part of that iconic element, then people know, oh, OK, Eiffel Tower, there it is. You don't have to show the whole thing all the time, because sometimes these structures are so tall that it's hard to fit everything um, in there, but you can just use part of it and still create a big picture. Here, um, right, again, I'm taking a lower angle, putting her head in that beautiful blue sky. She, the orange is a complementary color, so everything pops forward. I dragged that old fence in front of my camera just to give me something interesting in the foreground to lead to my subject. Central Park again, where again, 
finding a backdrop. And here's another thing that you want to have in your arsenal is a shallow depth of field lens, right? Something that goes down to 1.8, that's 50 millimeters or more. Every camera manufacturer makes a cheap 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. So there's no excuse why you shouldn't have one. And so, but it helps with your composition because it can blur out um, images in your background so it makes it less cluttered and you, I use that technique a lot. Okay, here's another. You can see the shape and then the leading lines leading up to her and she's popping off with that red and I have that umbrella raising it above her head and um, makes for a very impactful photo. Um, again, I'm using the sky as a shape in the trees. I do that a lot. Sky, trees, give me the frame, boom. Let's go with our heads right there. Here it's at, uh, okay, now this is a little bit interesting shot to talk about. That shape was created, as you can see the subjects are right in that nice little shape there. That, was sh uh, that shape was available only because I created my own light and I had a video light to light up that pillar. And so because that was lit up by a video light, now it gave me a perfect shape because it was all dark there. Before. So your understanding of lighting also will help create shapes. And in this case, I had to use that video light to create that nice shape. And then I love how there's shadow um, to the other side of them. And again, I'm looking for a corner. So I see a nice corner. And then I have the nice train on top and the leading lines and everything comes together. Here I'm Positano, Italy again, taking a low perspective. The texture of those uh, rocks on the ground are very interesting and it leads you right to the subject. And you can see them, right? Boom, right there, that's the place. And that's when you're gonna create impact is you have a clean shape and you put your subjects there. If I'm, you're doing a silhouette, make that silhouette interesting. Here, I blurred out the background. You kind of know it's Eiffel Tower, again, because it's iconic image. But here, using a shallow, depth of lens, a shallow depth of field or a fast lens was my saving grace here because it could make those elements behind them not as obvious, and so my subject will stick out. The next one, I'm using a reflection as my shape. So I see a beautiful reflection on the ground. I can also use that as a shape. So you can go out of the box on finding these shapes. It's not just the obvious all the time. You can even use things like uh, reflections. Here, uh, taking a lower angle on stairs is a good idea. So if you see stairs, you could put your subject at the top of the stairs. And then um, you can go more towards the bottom. So you could put their head more in the middle of the sky.